Welcome to International Securities Exchange's podcast series. Facilitated by renowned educators, ISC podcasts are intended to teach beginning as well as seasoned investors the ins and outs of trading. To find an updated list of podcasts, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts. Please be sure to listen to our important message following this episode regarding the risks of investing in exchange-traded options. So position traders, uh, when stocks or, com- or futures or Forex or anything, if you're a position trader, you really don't pay attention to the basing periods. It's probably not going to suit your style. I remember Mr. Weinstein saying he didn't like to tie his money up when prices were going sideways. Of course, he didn't have options back in the day, or he did just have options, but there really weren't any strategies that he could employ back in the day. So you can learn to trade these trading ranges, and you can do very well when price is going nowhere. Okay? But the position trader would like to buy low. He'd ride the trend the entire way up. He would ignore any of these counter trends. Um, as long as price stayed above his trend line, he would stay with the major trend. And this is where Mr. Weinstein um, used to exit. As soon as price broke down and we had a brand new top on a, on a weekly chart, he would close his long, uh, long trade, and he would sit and wait for the next cycle to repeat itself. So a position trader, buy low, hang on as long as the trend goes in your favor. When it tops and starts to drop, that's when you want to get out. And emotions now, listen, um, I didn't show you that slide back here for emotions, but some of the emotions you're going to have, of course, you're going to have hope when you first break out and start to move higher. But as you probably know, there's a lot of people over there sitting on big profits right now that are starting to get greedy. And you have to be careful because we could eventually in the stock market top out and we could drop, and if we have a weekly close below one of these little weekly channels like this, you could have your another down leg. And all of a sudden, the key is, trust me, folks, from somebody who's been there and done it, the key is is to get out here, keep your profits, and then if you're, unless you're a swing trader, ignore these uh, buying these pullbacks because you're trying to pick bottoms. And you'll hear on TV people say, this pullback's a buying opportunity, um, and those will be the counter trend rallies and a downtrend. And over here, you'll say, oh, this market's gotten so far ahead of itself. It's so far ahead of the fundamentals. And then you'll have these retracements in this uptrend. And that's what you've been having now. We're definitely in a stage two uptrend in the equities market. We're definitely in a stage four decline in the dollar. Okay? Now, a swing trader, oops, and then we'll get into the dollar itself. Notice how a swing trader... He'll take advantage of these channels. Um, he can actually trade the channels, or he could do some kind of option strategy. He could do some kind of uh, spread strategy when there's low volatility. He could do all different kinds of things to take advantage of a price that's going nowhere for long periods of time. All right? A swing trader actually will try to look for resistance areas from the past to initiate short positions in the uptrend. And if price does pull back to a support level during the uptrend, he'll just trade the vertical channel instead of the horizontal channel. Um, this, is a, this is what a swing trader can actively do. And again, this is more like Mr. Shawbacker's style than Mr. Weinstein's style. Same thing here. Once the market tops out, he can trade the channel long and short as long as price stays in the channel. Just like we can buy calls here and buy puts up here. Or we can uh, buy calls and sell, sell kind of protection below here, put on some kind of condors, anything. There's all kinds of strategies you can do, as long as you get good at identifying these periods of basing. And my goal here really is, is trust me, these four stages, as you see over here, um, they don't always play out as perfect as you see them drawn here. What would happen here if we were to base for a period of time and break out to the upside? Well, that would just mean that this uptrend took a little bit of a profit-taking and then a new breakout, a new up leg. And as long as you know that that sideways trading has the possibility of doing that, you don't panic out of your stocks. As soon as you get this closed, though, below this weekly channel like this, now you've got some kind of a short-term top. You go look at a weekly chart of Baidu after today, and you'll see exactly that. It based for a period of a few weeks, and after the earnings report, it collapsed. So that's going to be some kind of a top for that stock. Okay, so we talked about the dollar index being a basket against six currencies. 
Um, so the ISC FX options allow you to trade each one of them now. The biggest one, of course, is the Euro. Um, we just added the Swedish Corona, so you can actually trade that one too. Uh, some of them are going to be more range-bound than others, so it's going to offer you the opportunity to trade the range-bound currencies with range-bound strategies. Uh, obviously, the Euro is the biggest piece of this, so eventually, if you are trading the Euro, um, it'll have to go range-bound for the dollar to sustain its rally. So in other words, the dollar index can't rally very far if the euro continues to go higher. Okay, and every time I come here, we like to review where we were last year in June. Um, we had that tremendous rally, that unbelievable breakout to where we were basing in June and July, and then we broke out in August. We gained 10% in one month because of the beginning of the financial crisis. Uh, we actually gained 21% when we topped out in November uh, against the basket of currency. Some of the currencies we actually gained much, much more. Uh, but then we had this sharp sell-off, a, a correction um, just within a few weeks back down to test support at around 79 or 80. All right, back in March when we were here, we were talking. We said we're back up testing this multi-resistance uh, uh, level near 90. And at the same time, our stock indexes were testing multi-year support. So the biggest thing, though, folks, um, at the Trading Academy, we don't just teach short-term trading. A lot of people think with the, that that's all it's about, and it really isn't. It's a good information for a long-term trader to know that your equity indexes are coming into solid support, and at the same time, your dollar, which has been moving inversely, is coming into solid resistance. Because this way, you can plan for, for the possibility that these markets are going to have some kind of a reversal. Okay. And as I said in June, the dollar couldn't absorb the supply near 90, and it sold back down to the 78 support area. Okay, so the dollar index is this um, this chart right here. This is the index itself, the U.S. dollar index NIBOT, and you see the resistance area that we were talking about up here, and how we we rallied very close to it, and we sold off down to the origin of this nice rally here, and then we came back up and tested the level again right before the equity rally in March. And listen, we could have gone sideways for a few weeks and absorbed all the supply in this area, all the sellers, and then rallied higher and gone on and tested this next resistance area. Fact of the matter is there were just too many sellers up here and we ran out of willing buyers, right? And prices collapsed. But the fundamental reason that was given for this fundamental collapse right here was quantitative easing. Um, here, this is the, uh, the dollar versus the euro, the ISC index, and notice how it almost perfectly resembles the dollar index. So you can chart this one here, and you can use this for your dollar index. It's almost perfect. Here we came down and tested that support level again in June where we had that nice rally. So because the euro is a, uh, such a big component, we now use the, um, the euro versus the dollar, dollar euro ISC index to track the dollar index. And now we can trade this. Now, I want to point something out here. Uh, the NIBOT contract has a futures contract in addition to the spot contract. And you'll notice that um, this is kind of important. These charts will not look the same. So the futures contract, I want you to notice, we're very, very close on this chart to testing support from the rally from last year. And here, we actually did rally up into this resistance level twice. It's kind of different from what the spot chart looks like to where on the, on the cash index, we only rallied up to the resistance area once in March. We didn't quite get there the last time. And look at how far we can fall before we actually test any kind of solid support near 72 here. So these charts are a little bit different. Again, a futures contract expires, and then the contract gets rolled into the, into the continuous contract. And so these support and resistance areas, these, these uh, pockets of orders that we use uh, from, from trading in the past here to determine where we want to trade in the future, they can look a little bit different on some of these charts. And that could be a reason why the prices kind of turn like in the middle of nowhere. Thank you for listening to our podcast. To find more podcasts on options, stocks, alternative markets, and market data, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts.